In the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, every time that you do a quantum measurement that could have gone, let's say, up or down, you end up splitting into two versions of yourself, one who saw the result up and the other that saw the result down. But why is it that there are two of you? Why isn't there just one you who experiences both of those two worlds? Well, what it means for you to experience being in the up world is that you see um, evidence for uh, being in that world. So for example, your measurement device might tell you that it's measured up. Um, everyone else that you speak to says that they agree, they see that it's up, etc. So you see evidence that's consistent with that measurement outcome. On the other hand, what it means for you to be able to see both of those worlds is to see evidence consistent with both of them, maybe at the same time. So your measurement device, you look at it and it says up and down at the same time, or you find some evidence that the other world exists. What I'm going to show in this video, though, is that that won't be possible. You're only going to see evidence consistent with one of the universes. So, for example, you do the measurement and then you see the outcome up. And so then you try and find evidence for the down world, but you won't be able to. Your detector will say that it was up. If anyone else saw the measurement, they will agree with you. They will all think that it was up and nothing that you can do will find any concrete evidence at all of the down world existing. By the way, I'm still on holiday, so yes, this is my phone taped to a box that's balancing on another box. I'm a professional. All right, so here's our electron. A bunch of people ask me, why is the electron sad? That is this little joke that I have in my head, and um, I think you can figure it out for yourself. So we have this electron and we're going to measure something called the spin of the electron. The spin is just something that um, tells us how the electron is going to respond to a magnetic field. So we're going to set up this little box that has a magnetic field. It's called a stern gerlach machine. It's just a non-uniform magnetic field. If our electron was in a state that we'll call up, I'm going to write the states like this, then the electron would kind of travel up when it experiences this field. On the other hand, if the state of the electron is down, then the electron will go down. But in quantum mechanics, it's possible for the electron to be in a state up plus down. So that means that it's somehow doing both, which leads to the weird conclusion that it should be going both up and down when put in the stern go like machine. Like we talked about last time, you can just put some detectors here. And if the electron turns up in the state up, then this will register up. But if the electron turns up in the state down, then this will register down. Usual quantum mechanics just says that this machine just collapses the state of this electron. So if the machine sees that the electron is in state down, then the electron stops being in a superposition of both of those states and instead just becomes a down electron and stays that way. So the many worlds description of what's going on when you do a measurement is that this detector will have detected the electron being in both state up and state down. But why don't we ever see that? Why is it that when, you know, if you go into a lab yourself and you look at a detector that was measuring an electron like this, you wouldn't see the detector showing somehow both up and down. You would just see one. To understand this, let's go a bit back to basics. So we're actually going to consider a simpler case to start off with. And that is the case where actually the electron is definitely from the start in the up state. So the electron will certainly go upwards, the detector will certainly detect it in the up state, and you, with your keen powers of observation, will observe that the electron is in the up state because the detector is pointing up. How can we quantum mechanically talk about this situation? Well, the electron is in state up, the detector is in state up as well, and you, we can talk about your state, you are in the state of having observed up. 
But what would happen in the other case where the electron was in fact down? So the state of the electron would be down. It would go via the downwards path and get detected as down. So the detector state is down and you would look at that detector and say that the electron is down. So your state is this. So that is the case when there's no splitting universes or anything like that. So let's say that it's in state up, then it goes up, detector measures up, and our person measures up. But now the extra thing that she's going to do is she's going to write down this little note for herself, which says up. So I'm going to put the papers state into here. The same thing pretty much would have happened if instead of this being up, it was in the down state. And so this person would write down. And here again, the state in that case would have been this. Okay, this is going to sound like a really silly question, but what would happen if this person looked at the state of her paper in these two cases? In the case where the electron had been up, then her paper would say up. And in the case that the electron had been down, her paper would say down. I know that sounds obvious, but I'm just going to labor that point a little bit more because it's going to end up being pretty crucial. I'm going to introduce a quantum mechanical operation called C. C for check. If you happen to know the maths of quantum mechanics, this is a unitary matrix, but really doesn't matter. What I'm talking about is um, this operation is something that is going to happen to this state. And in this case, what it represents is our person looking at the piece of paper and deciding whether it is consistent with the experience of being in an up world or consistent with being in the uh, down world. So in other words, this C operation is literally just the, um, the physical process of her picking up the piece of paper, looking at what's written on it, and then going, oh, this evidence points to me being in a down world or an up world. Um, that's all it is. So that's the physical process that C represents. So um, we're going to apply C onto this state. What happens? All right, my drawing is atrocious. Um, but what this means is this person looks at her piece of paper and, you know, in this case, she was in the down world. And so she had written down originally. And now she's looking at the piece of paper and she declares, oh, I'm in a down world. So that's like her experiencing this piece of evidence. And um, I'm going to write that state of that as this little thing here. This is her having the experience of being in a down world. So like, which so far isn't weird because she absolutely is. Like with 100% probability, the electron is down in this case. And so, you know, it makes sense for her to have the experience of being in the down world when she like looks for evidence. By the way, I have a piece of paper here, but it really didn't need to be paper. Like instead of it being paper, she could have just gone and like told one of her colleagues and said, hey, um, uh, just so you know, I did a measurement. It came out as down. Can you remember that for me? I'm going to ask you later. And so then C would be the operation of her going back later and asking her friend, um, do you remember what that result was? And them saying exactly what it was um, and her going, OK, well, like that evidence is consistent with me being in a down world. OK, so so far, nothing weird about this. It might just seem a little bit strange that I'm really belaboring this and writing it all in this funny notation. You'll see why in a second, because now we're going to use this property of quantum mechanics that's pretty important that's called linearity. This is the only bit of maths that you really, really need to know to understand what happens in the many worlds interpretation. So um, kind of generally, this is what it means. If you have a superposition, so a superposition of one state and another state, and you know individually what would happen to this state, and you know individually what would happen to that state, then when you add them together, the result of the future state is going to be as if you let this one evolve and you let this one evolve and then you add them together. So maybe let me make that a little bit more concrete. The weird thing happens when you consider what would happen if you had started off in the superposition state. We've, we want to find out what would have happened if you applied C to that combination state. In quantum mechanics, 
Linearity means that when you have a combination state like this, you can figure out what happens to it when it evolves under an operator like C by figuring out what happens to one of its parts, so this part, when C acts on it, and then figuring out what happens to the other part when C acts on it, which is here. This equation looks pretty innocuous, but this is actually the crux of it, because look at what it's saying. It's saying that if you want to know what happens to that combination state, which is the state where you put in both of those things, um, and now you end up splitting into both universes, then you can first look at what happens with just the state where it was all up and just the state where it's all down. What happens to this person when she looks at her piece of paper? We know that according to the many worlds interpretation and the maths that we did just before, that there are two versions of herself. We're trying to show that um, she won't be able to find any evidence of the other version of herself. So if she were to find herself in the up universe, that there is no way that she could verify that the down universe even exists. Um, and we're going to see exactly why that is now. One way that she might try and find evidence of the other world is by looking at that piece of paper, because she knows that if there really is another world with another version of herself, then that version of herself has written the other result on the piece of paper. In other words, there are two versions of this piece of paper, one that says up and one that says down. Is she going to see the one consistent with the universe that she's in, or is she going to be able to experience the other universe? Let's see. All right. So this plus this, we know that goes to those two parts. So it's this part and this part. All right, so here is that horrible state. It's just this, which is that state, uh, plus uh, this, which is that. So just put them into this equation here. Um, but what does this mean? Does she have the experience of seeing both pieces of paper or not? And does she convince herself that she's in both worlds or not? Well, you can see that here, her state is in the state of being utterly convinced that she's in the up world here, and in this one, of being utterly convinced that she's in the down world, because all of the evidence that she's looked at like this piece of paper is consistent with one of the worlds only. So both versions of herself will look at that piece of paper and look at whatever other evidence and only see evidence for being in one of the worlds. One of them will be convinced that she's in the up world for sure, and the other one will be convinced that she's in the down world for sure. And neither of them will ever be able to see any evidence of the other world existing. This example isn't proof that you wouldn't be able to experience any of the other universes, because after all, this is just one attempt that you might make to try and see um, the other universe. And this is the sort of like most obvious thing you would do, which is just like looking for obvious evidence of the other world existing. Our person here, though, knows some quantum mechanics, and so she's not just going to do this obvious experiment. Instead, she's going to do something a lot more clever and it's called a interference experiment. So in quantum mechanics, whenever you have a superposition state, so in this case, um, up plus down is the state of the electron, then it's possible to take that electron and do an experiment that will verify that it is in that superposition state rather than just the state up or down, but you don't know which. So it will verify that it really is in that superposition state. And as a bonus, that experiment won't destroy the state, so it will leave it in that state. How does it work? Well, you need to measure something else. Instead of measuring whether the electron is up or down, which would you know, mess up the state, so you don't want to do that, you have to measure something else. In this case, it would be measuring um, the left-rightness of the electron. So you take another stern galactic -like machine, but instead of having it in this sort of orientation, you've got to turn it over like this, so now the electric field's in this direction, and you'll be measuring whether it's left or right. And if you do that experiment, you'll be able to verify that the electron is in the uh, up plus down state because it will go left and it will stay in the previous state that it was in. Our person, being clever, thinks, well, even after doing all of this stuff, it might be possible to go back and collect up that electron and do that interference experiment. If that interference experiment 
shows that the electron is in a superposition, then that will be the evidence that she needs that the other world exists, because that would show that the electron has both an up and a down component. That means both the up and the down world do exist. In my previous video, I went through the maths of what happens when she does that experiment, but the result is that actually she doesn't find any evidence of interference. And so in other words, it looks actually as if the electron is only in the up state, which is consistent with her only being able to experience the up universe. Why is that? It's because the electron isn't in this simple superposition state anymore. Instead, it's in this extremely complicated superposition state where the electron is entangled with everything here, with the device, with every particle inside of this person's brain, this piece of paper, everything. And so this is the state that she needs to verify is in a um, superposition. It would be possible to verify that you are in this crazy superposition state, but it would be really, really difficult. So what it would take is for someone else to come and put all of this stuff into a box so that they don't look at it and they don't observe what state anything is in. And then they have to do this crazy measurement, this crazily large entangling measurement that involves everything here. So not just the electron, the this detector, all of the particles inside the detector, all the particles inside this person, all the particles inside of this uh, piece of paper, and anything else that's interacted. For example, air molecules that might have uh, taken away some information about the state of this electron, photons, anything. So whatever has interacted here, you better get all of those, put them into a big box, and do this super huge measurement on them. Good news is that if you do it well, uh, then the state of this system stays the same. So you won't have killed the person or the electron or anything like that. Um, everything should remain the same, but you will have evidence that the state is this superposition state and not just one or the other. So you will see evidence for both worlds. But um, of course, it is basically impossible to be able to do that experiment because that would require you to have extremely precise control of every single thing in this system. It's in practice essentially impossible. Meanwhile, for a person who finds themselves split in two by one of these quantum measurements, uh, they will not be able to experience the other version of themselves, no matter how hard they try, because all of the evidence that they see around them will be consistent with just one of those worlds. So this video is a follow-up from my previous video, which is about basically why I really like the many worlds interpretation. And I think that actually it's a simplification of quantum mechanics. So if you want to watch that, um, you can find it over here somewhere. Thank you everyone for your amazing questions on that video. There were so many good ones that um, I think I'm just going to try and make like a few more videos that try and cover some of them. If you have any more questions, I'd really appreciate them. Leave them in the comments and I'll try and make a video about them. Thanks.